Yes, it's working. Um, where it was, you know, and, and I'll talk about what it is, but it was a few projects going, we, you know, we really need to work on this thing. We really need to focus on the user and do these things that, that address the user. And this is a recent one from a recent chart from uh, the roll up Andy talked earlier today, where now lots and lots of people, lots and lots of projects are working on chain abstraction. And you know, Bert Banksy over there, he talked about, yeah, chain abstraction is, is like any useful, valuable, characterizing term that gets narrative behind it. It is the thing you stick on your project in order to get in order to raise VC funds. Right? So, so what I want is a modular chain abstraction AI, is, is really what I want. Um, no, no, it is a very specific thing. It is, you know, from our perspective, it is the challenge of what users want. Users want, to the extent that they want Web3 at all, users want to use Web3 assets and services independent of the underlying blockchain. It's not intense, it's not software, it's not whatever. It's what the users want. And then there's lots of ways to approach that, and we'll talk about some of that. But the other thing that we did when we brought this in, when we were driving this at the first chain abstraction day in February, is we did a splash where our focus was orchestration. There we go. Push the magic button. So the people that were working on chain abstraction in here, you know, flashbots, et cetera, you know, were focused on things like Intense. And Intense had a had a had a ball rolling in the uh, Ethereum ecosystem as a way to simplify user experience. But it's very focused. It's a very point solution. It's very focused on swap X. You know, swap token X. I have token X. I want token Y. Or I have token X on chain A. I want token Y on chain B. And that's a really valuable, important thing to do. But it's a point solution. Sometimes users want that, but mostly not. Okay, but this, this is what got it all started. What's really going on, right? We have with modular and with other things, we've created a world of lots and lots of chains, currently hundreds, maybe someday thousands, maybe more than that. I don't know, how many web servers are there? Are there? How many app servers are there? That'll be how many chains there might be. But we've created this world and they're connected. And the light, you can just barely see, yeah, there's, there's connected lines in, right? Um, where they're connected with IBC, they're connected with bridges, they're connected with Axelar, they're connected with all these things. But you have to hand carry your assets from one place to the other. So if what I want to do is I have USDC burning a hole in my pocket and I want Celestia token and I want it staked, I've got to get the USDC, I've got to move it over a bridge from Ethereum to Cosmos, I've got to move it over to Osmosis, I've got to sign a swap, I've got to move it over Celestia and then I've got to sign a stake, right? I've got to do all these operations. So when people, you know, how, how many people have done one of these bridges things? How, how many people have done, you know, sort of just enough DGEN to have gotten that? Okay. Now, for all of you people here who flew here, did you have to move your money from your Wells Fargo account or whatever to the Chase account of the airline so that you could buy your plane ticket? The answer is, of course, not, right? So there are these apps that are smoothing out the ability to take one, one token on one chain, X on chain A, and get you know, Y on chain B, you know, across, skip, you know, various these things. And they're doing a fabulous job of that. And it's still a terrible idea, right? It's making it easier for me to move my money from Wells to Chase so I can buy a ticket on United, as opposed to you know, go to Expedia, push a button, get a ticket, right? So the real thing that chain abstraction is about, this users want to be able to use assets and services, we all hope, right? Without caring about the underlying infrastructure is they don't care about your tribe, they don't care about your technology. What they care about is push button and get the plane ticket, right? And that's what we need to deliver. And the thing that's exciting about chain abstraction sort of from an overall, uh, a ro overall um, crypto uh, community is first off, this problem is obvious to people because People are actually asking for something, right? They actually want something. Users want something. That's really important for our industry is that users want something. And the crypto community is starting to realize that they actually have to deliver that. They actually have to deliver value and deliver value by giving users what they want instead of saying, well, I've got this hammer called ZK and, and you look like a nail, so here's how you need to you know, use this hammer. Okay. Now, I have a hammer, so I'm going to tell you about my hammer, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Okay, so in this, we have created, you know, we, we have created now this world. The other thing is, of course, you get this, you know, trillion, two or whatever liquidity, but it's all fragmented across these, these, these uh, hundreds or thousands of chains. So the kinds of things users want, you know, at the end of the day, what they're going to want is I push button and I get a ticket, right? I get a ticket to an event, 
you know, and I, I mean, I don't encounter Web3. I get a ticket to an event and I can resell it. And when I resell it, the original artist gets some share of whatever I resold it for. That's a value prop that artists care about, that content creators care about, that end users that want to go to events care about, and that Web3 enables in many circumstances. And we're just barely scratching the beginnings of the ticket market. But that's the kind of thing that would actually add value to users that are not Web3 folks. They don't, they're not DJs, they're not whatever, right? What they are is human beings trying to go out their life and enjoy it, and they want a ticket to an event, and we could make that better. And oh, by the way, that's a $60 billion a year industry that we are not yet solving, and we could, right? So, so, so solving chain abstraction is a big deal. But I will focus on more crypto use cases I'm talking through this because we all encounter them, and indeed, we know there's an audience of people doing it. So I want to retain my yield, my staking yield, if you're in a proof of stake world, um, while using my assets elsewhere, right? And so. Underneath, the system should take my stuff, liquid stake it, take the liquid stake token, use it as collateral, mint a stable coin against it, and go off and let me spend it. But I want to do all those steps. That's a lot of work. That's the kind of thing where my end-to-end -end use case is not individual transactions. It is the thing that combines those, tra those transactions to solve my problem. Right? I want to use my assets independent with chain I've on. I said I talked about that. So my, my typical scenario that I use, and indeed, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're use, we, I use uh, Celestia token today because I think it was this morning that they just turned on the actual uh, IBC integration so you can reach uh, Celestia from, um, uh, from, from all the uh, interchain uh, world. Or I want to be able to get the best yield out of various yield pools for my stable. And you know, whether, it's, whether, whether I'm doing that now or you know, bull run, bear run, or depending on interest rates, but this is a use case that lots of people want to do. And it's not just I want the best yield for these two curves on one particular AMM, it's like there's some in Cosmos, there's some on Ethereum, there's some in Polygon, there's some in Solana. I want to be able to spread my portfolio across all of those because I don't care about your chain, right? You know, the users don't care about our chain. They want to be able to use those services. They hear about it from a friend and they want to get into it without having to think about which chain it is, right? And so, but in order to do that, I mean, the kind of thing they want is I want to authorize rebalancing my portfolio. I don't want to authorize you know, take this transaction for this many little basis points and move it over on that bridge and all that sort of thing. I just want to do my user level. Okay, so users want better experiences and that's what we need to deliver. But doing that stuff across chains is hard, right? We, you know, Ethereum had this very simple model of the world um, where everything's sequential, everything's serialized, everything's atomic, and I can stop the entire world's economy to do my one thing that uses these two contracts and then we will let the economy proceed. And that's a really nice, you know, toy sandbox that you can do, you know, well, okay, billions and billions and billions of dollars. But you can only do relatively simple use cases and relatively simple scale. And we're now embedded in a world with all these chains where the world is now back to what's familiar from Web 2, which is lots of independent services called, you know, microservices in Web 2 or called uh, blockchains or, or modular blockchains or whatever it is in Web 3. And they communicate in an asynchronous world and coordinate. And that's a hard problem. And it's the one that we have now stepped into and need to solve. So, you know, that, that's, so that's what we, okay. So Agoric's focus is not point solutions, but how do we support people and enable them to solve that? And if there's a glass of, I had a glass of water that wandered away. Well, all right. Um, okay. In existing system, in you know, in, in in traditional blockchains, if you will, like Solidity, like Tezos, like Cosmos, Cosmwasm, Solana, etc. Thank you. Programming, every program that people write essentially starts and ends within one block. Right? You've got you've got this half a second, one second, two seconds, five seconds, whatever it is, and you know, your swap starts in that block and ends in that block, right? Most relationships, most ongoing financial relationships, and certainly any cross-chain application, any end-to-end -end use case is more than one block. Any cross-chain application is necessarily more than one block because you can't get out of one blockchain until you finish a block and go on to the next. And so what that means is the programming infrastructure of Solidity, Solana, et cetera, doesn't provide support for this hard problem of asynchronous coordination. And so that's what orchestration is all about, is, in, is solving that problem of asynchronous coordination across blockchains. 
So let's see if I pick that. Okay. <clears throat> You'll be the other. <laughs> so let's go back to that scenario. If I've got USDC burning a hole in my pocket and I want stake TF, right? In February, when we first talked about this, that was, you know, there were there were billions of dollars that were going and doing that. With you know them starting to integrate in an IBC, you're gonna start seeing this for projects that start to come online in Celestia. So this is the same, you know, same problem shows up on an ongoing basis, and modular is gonna make it an interesting, exciting place um, in general going forward. But that's what I want to authorize. I don't want to authorize all the individuals with transactions. I want to authorize this action. So the way that works in orchestration is there's a smart contract running on the Agoric blockchain where that smart contract is able to use async messaging over to other blockchains, IBC in the, in the context of the Cosmos ecosystem, you know, but Wormhole, Axelar, Union Bridge, Polymer, et cetera. All of these things provide the connectivity that I described before where we've got this connected world, but we don't have the software to be able to automate the programming across it. Well, this is how it, we automate the programming across it. We've got a smart contract running on Agoric. It can send a message to Noble to get my USDC and tell it to, hey, send it over to Osmosis, and on Osmosis, swap it for Celestia token, send the, 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 the Celestia token over to Celestia, and then stake it, right? So what does that look like, okay, in code? So I love having code because, you know, I was an old cypherpunk, right? You know, cypherpunks write code. So here's some code. So let's reach out, get an object, and this is this is example code of the orchestrate using the orchestration API that we introduced uh, for Agoric. And so we run JavaScript, native JavaScript on chain with the full-on JavaScript model. And that provides a unique programming environment, the kind of thing that lets you do multi-block action. So what does that mean? Get me an object that gives me the authority to do various things on the Celestia chain. It lets, it's all the stuff that's exposed over IBC. And I'm going to reach out to that Celestia chain, and I'm going to make a brand new account. So the first miracle is, of course, I can do that at all. And that was, you know, that's a IBC um, interchain uh, uh, um, uh, interoperability protocol supports that. So we, we get that for free on, in, in Cosmos chains, and it takes more work in EVM, but it's doable. But the miracle of the platform here is that await, right? This block ended, I'm now going to wait for the response to come back, and when it comes back, I'm going to go on to the next line of code. This is a multi-block action. This is how trillions of dollars worth of value are orchestrated on a daily basis among microservices in Web2, in Bloomberg terminals and Salesforce and so forth. It, it controls trillions of dollars a day of, across these asynchronous services by using this kind of mechanism. So we wait for the answer to come back, and when it comes back, the second miracle of the platform is that ICA Celestia is a JavaScript object where that's the only thing on the planet that can control the assets in that brand new created account. Now that account is empty currently, right? But that's the only thing that can control that asset. So I don't have any you know, permissions and, and, and management and, and, and identity checking and all that sort of stuff. I just, don't know. I just have an object, right? Okay, and we'll talk about it. So now I go on to the next line of code. And this is a thing that's, that, that's supported in, in uh, a, a variety of chains. So I'm going to say, from my ICA Noble account, Noble is where USDC would have arrived um, from, from Ethereum after you know, a, a prior phase to this. So that USDC there, I'm saying, send $1,000. You know, send it to Osmosis, swap it for Celestia with a bunch of arguments, right? Is that four minutes? Oh my god, I'm going to talk faster. OK. Um, and to deliver the answer to this brand new created account and reach out to Celestia, find out how much I got there because there was slippage, and stake it, right? So this has now done something that takes people three hours, two bridges, and four signatures, and instead it's seven or eight lines of code, okay? And you authorize this once and then it does the job for you. Now you could do lots of things after this, right? You could, um, you know, and this did it across multiple chains. So, so for example, whoa, uh, hit some button. Can you click on that on the, yeah, camera, thank you. Let's see if I can now, oh, can click slideshow. Up there. Mm. Mm. Okay, that worked, thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Do, do, do. Okay, I've already done that, right. So now what do I want to do after that, right? Well, you know, Stride authorized an airdrop for, for, for um, uh, uh, 
uh, for, for, for TIA tokens. So I want to start by, you know, I want to now do a process where I do one authorization. And the thing I want is take my stake token and get me liquid stake token, right? And so I'll start by how much do I have delegated? All right, undelegated. Wait 21 days, because that's how long the undelegate happens, and then do various steps that will get me to, that will end up with on my, my liquid staking account, you know, do a liquid stake operation, and now I've got a liquid stake token, okay? That's one thing I might do. Or I might use timers um, to where I, what I want to say is every 24 hours, do a process, do an orchestration flow to com compound my staking, right? And for the Celestia, the ICA Celestia account that I just mentioned. And what does that flow look like? Well, it pretty much looks like a JavaScript function that starts with withdraw rewards. Now remember, this is JavaScript running on the Agoric platform, reaching out to say, yeah, withdraw rewards from that account that I'm passing in and find out how much I got because I just withdrew the reward. So how much is there? And then stake it. Okay, I'm done. Right? Now I've got this thing that can do the everyday auto compounding of my staking rewards in a relatively straightforward fashion. And I want to just authorize this. Or perhaps that whole thing was the use case and I just authorize, start from USDC and get to a place where I'm continually, re, you know, con continually compounding my staking role. Right? Now, this timer thing is not in the current release of the API. It's in, a, it's in an upcoming release, so that's you know, alpha syntax, if you will, or that's alpha that we're doing that. But um, we've got the core API is in uh, development environment now. It is in the release process to come out this month for and projects that are building on it. So what are the impossible things that this is that is unique to this, right? That ability to do multi-block actions is something you can't do anywhere else. So the ability to do async await and move on to the next line is something that is fundamental nowadays to coordinating asynchronous activity on multiple places. And it's something that is that that you know took a lot of work and a lot of effort to build onto the platform. You can do timers, right? I show you that example of periodic where where it's not just that time is available, which is surprising to me, you can't, it's very difficult to get in other blockchains, but because of the multi-block async model, it's easy to integrate, it smoothly fits in. And indeed, lots of things smoothly fit in where the reason JavaScript is the number one programming language on the planet is because when you add a library, if you took you know, integrated Union Bridge, or if you integrated Polymer or Hyperlane or whatever, and added a library, so instead of saying get chain Celestia, you say get chain polygon, which we will do in Q1, you know, Q4, Q4 and Q1, right? That, 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 that acts just like a, you know, it, it, is, it is as usable as anything that was natively provided. So the system is extensible in the way that people extend UI frameworks in, you know, for browsers. And so those things combine to give you sort of this unique ability to build cross-chain applications that address some of these things, right? So you know that you get the you can do the seamless experience of users approve the use case they understand and care about instead of the accidental set of low-level transactions that is inflicted upon them by our by our current architecture. And as a result, you can do more sophisticated things like these portfolio management, like these compounded staking, implemented in very simple ways, which gives you the ability to do more interesting, more valuable economics. And finally, as it turns out, you know, if you're like a liquid staking platform, you produce this thing, someone liquid stakes, they've got now this, this, this token. The first thing they're going to do with it is go take it somewhere else, osmosis in the Cosmos ecosystem, but it's, you know, every, every other platform, it's take it somewhere else in order to actually do the thing which, is, which motivated them in order to do the liquid staking at all. You have now lost the customer. With orchestration, you can instead have this flow that's the heart of your, your infrastructure that includes and incorporates those other services. So now the modular explosion of all these independent app chains, instead of it being fragmentation, it's now just more services that we can include into these simple end-to-end -end exper experiences for users, right? It becomes more of a positive um, than, than, the, than the fragmentation negative side. So I will. Race through. So, what is it? You know, we're a layer one powered by build. You know, with orchestration as a thing to enable you as developers to solve this this chain abstraction problem, and for users, it delivers that simple one-click experience for these rich end-to-end -end use cases. And uh, if you're a project that is interested, 
by all means, come in and, and, and uh, uh, check it out. Join the early access program to get the current libraries or participate in design ahead for Ethereum and later Solana. And uh, thank you all for your time. <laughs>